the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you. Hey, man, God bless you. I, this is deep today. I really, I'm telling you, they deep every day, really, right? Every Sunday, right? But this is deep. This one is probably the most important message that was ever discussed uh, that we went over today, or I went over today. And I wanted to share with you, and I, I just want to encourage you to listen to these studies this week um, because it matters to you personally concerning the direction you should take in life, concerning the Word of God. And the direction should always be toward Christ, toward Yeshua, toward Jesus. You know, the scripture says in John 14, 6, Jesus, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And that means you don't go by the color of your skin. You don't go by your political affiliation. You don't go by your nationality. You don't go by what country you're in. You don't go by the country where you came from. You go by Christ. He said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. But if you can keep that in mind, you can make a big difference. So we're going to go and talk about the study real quick. This is the introduction. And, and one of the things I want to do is make sure you know this is what we talked about today. This is a good question, too. It's like the fact is, and, and I like it, and I think it makes sense. It's a question. And I'm going to answer the question at the same time. Do Christians believe we are not accountable to God, but to man? And the scripture I'm using is Romans 14, 12, Jeremiah 17, 10, and Galatians 1, 6 through 10. I'm going to focus on the foundation scriptures in Romans 14, 6 through 12 that I'm going to talk about. But the point is this. Do Christians, because that's why that's what I am. I'm a believer in Christ, Christ Jesus. He's my Lord and personal Savior. So I'm asking a question as a fellow Christian to other Christians, right? I'm gonna answer the question in a second. But what I'm saying is, do Christians believe we are not accountable to God but to man? The answer is that we are accountable to God, not to man. And but your actions must line up with that statement, right? Because what people see. And let me get this up. Come off the screen right here. What people see is in most cases, it seems like people move based on the will or preference of your fellow man. You call yourself a Christian. You call yourself a believer in Christ. But you do the thing that is, you do contrary to the word of God. And therefore, you act like you're not accountable to God. Now make sure you get this, this foundational script I was using is in Romans, like I was telling you earlier, in Romans 7. And I want to make sure we cover those real quick. In Romans 7, it says, let me make sure I get it up there for you. I know I got to talk too long. Romans 14, side is 7 to 12. For none of us live unto himself. And no man dies to himself. For whether we live, whether we live, we live unto the Lord. And whether we die, we die unto the Lord. Whether we live therefore or die, we are the Lord's. For this, for to this end, Christ both died and rose and revived, that he might be Lord both of the dead and the living. For why dost thou judge thy brother? Or why dost thou set at naught thy brother? For we shall all, we shall all stand before the judgment seat of Christ. For it is written, as I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. Every one of us shall give an account of himself to God. I say it again. Every one of us should give an account of himself to God. That preacher, that minister should give an account of himself to God. And if he's sitting there endorsing you to do bad things, you know, I have one of my friends sit there and say, 
I want to be able to talk about and preach about all kinds of things. And then I, some of the things, I don't want the, the system to discriminate me and tell me I can't preach about the Bible. You know, the, if you're teaching, if you're a Christian, you're teaching about preaching the good news. And people should walk out being able to go preach the good news. If people walk out and sit there and go and beat somebody up because of this exploitation or something else, if people go out there and go and list people because of the color of skin, you didn't preach the good news. Because that, you obviously didn't preach the good news. You didn't preach that they were supposed to love one another. You preached that they were supposed to be the wrath of God. That's not God. That's not the will of God. We should not be going around crucifying anybody. We should not be beating up anybody. We should be loving everybody. And if you feel that that's not justified, but you feel that the preaching the gospel is not enough, then you go ahead and be something else, but you're not preaching the gospel. And the Bible says if you preach any other gospel, you are a curse. You think about that. We're supposed to love one another. We're supposed to encourage other people to come to Christ. We're supposed to sit there and say that come as you are because the only person who can clean you is Him. We're supposed to sit there and say the only way I can be holy is through Him. The only way I can be righteous is through Him. Remember that. That's what we're talking about today. So I hope you enjoyed this study. I hope you learned the session coming up. Don't forget to subscribe and don't forget to share what you learned to somebody else. Cause that's really what matters. You can subscribe all you want, leave a comment all you want. I don't care, I wanna hear what scripture, but I want you, if you're gonna comment, comment based on the scriptures. Because that's what matters. But the bottom line is this, we all are giving account to God. So I hope you enjoyed the session coming up. Well, I'm going to break them down into A, B, C, D, whatever the cup takes. And then I'm going to go ahead and send these out daily. But I want you to remember that Yeshua is Lord. Jesus Christ is Lord in your life. And do His will. That's all that matters. Enjoy the session. Don't forget to subscribe. And I'll see you when I see you. God bless. Bye-bye. <laughs> hey, man. God bless you. Hey, we started the, uh, uh, the session again. <laughs> Some of you, well, irregardless, this is the one that's going to be, hopefully we'll make it to the editing. All right, what we're going to talk about today, and I'm going to go ahead and just press through it, because um, like I said, the challenges of, of technical challenges just got, just got to be something you just work on through. But obviously, it's, it's an important message today that we go through some of these challenges, maybe some of these obstacles comes up because of that. So let's go forward. And, and what we're going to talk about today is a very, probably, probably the most important uh, discussion for Christians, for believers. And it may be even a message more where we pull away from the bondage of religion and put ourselves under the authority of God. And, and what I've seen in a lot of cases is that religion cloak themselves as Christians so that they can do bad things, so they can control people, manipulate people, because that's what, that's what you got some people that say, religion is, is a tool to control. And what we need to do is, as believers is understand we are not under the control of man or religion or governments. We're under the control of God. Now, under the control of God does mean, at least from the scripture's perspective, is that we, we, you know, he wants us to obey the ordinance of governments. He wants us to obey the ordinance of, of local governments and federal governments and world governments. He, 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 he's, his will is not for that, to go against those things. His will is to operate and bear the fruits of the Spirit which is Galatians 5, 22, 5, 22, 23. Now the fruits of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance against such things, no law. And because of that, if we stay focused on doing and bearing good fruit, we can get along with one another because it is the will of God to get along with one another. What, what religion has done is if religion has become combatant, militaristic, and try to impose their will and say, no, I'm imposing God's will. No, you don't, you don't impose God's will on people. 
that's what people that's where I think religion gets gets that's where religion comes off track from being Christians and just being religious. And I ain't talking about just Christianity. <laughs> I'm talking about all religion. Is that when we sit there and now we become the enforcers of God's will and God does not need you to enforce his will. And some of you sit there and argue that, but I'm telling you, so you are not an enforcer of God's will. You were not called to be an enforcer of God's will. You were called to preach the gospel. Now, if you are a police officer or a military soldier or government official, you are called, you are hired, you are volunteered to uh, ensure that the Constitution, the legal system, the laws of the land are applied across the board. You are there to represent to you the executive branch to represent the will of the government and the ordinance and so forth. You you that are politicians, you that are in Congress, whether from state or federal level, you're there to represent the will of the people to apply laws and stuff that goes along with the will of the people but it always must go under the law of the Constitution or the legal ordinances. And even the legal system ordinance that you come up with must line up with the Constitution. And then we as Christians, we everything we do need to line up with the Word of God. But the Word of God, and not for us Christianity, is not to use force to... Uh, you're supposed to preach the will of God. You're not supposed to impose the will of God. Not 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 the sense of what you've been some of y'all been doing. You know, some of you've been doing the the killing, lynching, discrimination, uh, dehumanizing, uh, ostracizing, uh, all those type of things that you have been doing. And then you sit there and try to say you're doing the will of God. Let me tell you something. If you go against the will of God. Because you know what, if you don't know the will of God, that's what we're talking about today. What is the will of God? What is the word of God says? And if you operate contrary to those things and you're doing the will of God, you are lying to yourself, you are deceived, and you are blind. So as we go into this study today, we're going to go straight to the point. We're not going to sit there and start telling religious people, we're not going to tell people to sit there and operate in, as wolves in sheep clothing, we are tired of you. We need to, we will, we that are believers will follow the will of God. And that means that we're not going to play discrimination. We're not going to pray lynching. We're not going to kill people. And, and those people will do those things, going to contrary to the will of God, you will be held accountable to God. Not to man, but to God. And then and you think that's feel okay? That's fine. Because I guarantee you, and this is historically proven, that every last one of us, unless the Lord comes back, will go to die, go to die. I will give us to take a dirt nap. I'm going to tell you, say, we'll die. And if anybody can dispute that, you tell your pastor, you tell your preacher, hey, I'm not going to die, right? I mean, physical death. I'm not going to have a physical death, right? He's going to tell you, yeah, you're going to, you're going to have a physical death. And I guarantee every last one of us will tell you that because that's a true thing. That's a true thing. Except for the fact that unless the Lord comes back. But then you got to sit there and say, well, if the Lord comes back, I'm going up, right? I'm going up to, I'm going up to the Lord, right? You, you're going up to the Lord as long as you do his will. No, I'm doing your will, man. I'm doing what you, I'm doing, I'm taking my political party position. I heard what the political party told me to do. I'm doing, I've been, I've been doing the will of the people forever. So when Jesus comes back, when the Yeshua comes back, I'm going to be caught up, right? Only if you do his will. And I, don't, I, don't, I guarantee you there's no pastor, no family member, no person who have justified, endorsed killing, lynching, discrimination, anything else is going to be able to tell you that it's okay to do those things. And yet many of you have been doing those things, thinking that you're doing the will of God as being an instrument of God. And God did not appoint you. You know, God has angels. Maybe some of you don't know that. God has angels, right? And, and those angels uh, are the ones that 
have been doing the, the will of God concerning any type of wrath, any type of retribution. You know, when we talk about Christianity, I, I'm not talking about the teaching of the Old Testament. And some of you sit there trying to be Old Testament saved, but you're not, you're not, unless you are Hebrew, <laughs> unless you're from the tribe of Judah or the tribe of, of, of one of the other 12 tribes of Israel, you're not, you, you, I do, you, I hope you recognize that the only link that allows you to be inheritance of God is through your ship, through Jesus. You, you, I hope you understand that. I hope your pastor is telling you that. So whatever God told the children of Israel to do <laughs> concerning war and conflicts and so forth, that doesn't apply to you. I don't even know how you can think it applies to you. Because Christ, the only reason, look at it. Christ said in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by Him. Not by being a Jew or saying I'm, I'm grafted into the Jews, so I'm going to go and take the promised land. I'm going to go by the Ten Commandments and all the other ordinances and everything else. No, you're going to go by the will of Christ. You're going to go by the teaching of Christ. But if you don't, if, if you can sit there, you can let people, you can see people all you want, you are not the instrument of wrath. And yet many of you have done that. Instead of sitting there talking they did, or endorse other people, you try to tell you endorse your congregation and let them be the instruments of destruction. In reality, they are not. And you need to stop leading people to the path of destruction. That's what I'm concerned about, people leading people to the path of destruction instead of leading people to Christ, to follow Christ. Christ said, I'm the way, again, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. If any pastor, any ministry, any political party, any government <laughs> that forces people and encourages people to do something, to say they're doing it under the will of God, you need to sit and say, no, no, I'm not doing it under the will of God. I'm doing it under the ordinance of man. A soldier is doing his job under the ordinance of that government. But his conduct, his behavior in war and everything else, and, and being a police officer, you, even though your system may give you that, you still have to give yourself account to God Almighty. And if you did murder, if you did the lynching, if you did the discrimination, if you did all those type of things, you're going to be held accountable for it. And that's what we're going to talk about today. The whole point is you can be held accountable. We are all held accountable to God, you know? So, it's like I said, I like that little scripture to the, to, the, to the left of me, from you, from your perspective, from the Nehemiah 8, 8. And so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly and gave the sense and caused them to understand the reading. That's what we want to do, focus on the reading. And in this, in this tough subject today, I think you'll love it. I love it. <laughs> and I think it's worth worth uh, sharing and going over with. It's top of the fact that it says that do Christians believe we are not? Listen to the question. That's a good question, isn't it? Do Christians believe we are not accountable to God, but to man? And the scripture I'm using is going to be Romans 14, 12, Jeremiah 17, 10, and the Galatians 6, 1 through 10. Do you believe that you are not accountable to God? Because I'm telling you, the Bible says that a tree is known by its fruit. And if the fruit says that you're supposed to be a hell accountable to God, it, it means that you don't violate the will of God. You don't violate the word of God. You don't kill people, do bad things to people, do bad things to your neighbor, and sit there and say, I'm still doing the will of God. Pastors have been telling you to do that. Uh, ministries have been telling you to do that. Government officials sometimes are telling you to do that. Politicians definitely tell you to do that. But you will still be held accountable to God. And you can go ask your, well, we're gonna let the scripture speak for itself. Cause I think that's the best way to do it, right? Let the scripture speak for itself. So let's go into the scriptures uh, real quick. Cause like I said, I started on real late. I mean, it's like, whew. So, so the study today, is the fact is that we all give an account of ourselves to God. 
<laughs> so leave this one thing, if nothing else, what would Jesus do? What would Yeshua do? Think that way as you move through life. Okay? <laughs> and don't worry about whether people approve of where you are, where you are or not. You are a child of God because it's the will of God. Remember we put that in 2 Timothy? He will for all men to be saved and come to the full knowledge of the truth of God. I'm putting things out. I talk to you longer because I'm trying to make sure you get the word of God. Because it's the word of God that matters, not me. But I'm guaranteeing you if some preacher or some Christian sit there and say, you are accountable to me. And I'm going to judge you. I'm going to assess what you believe or not. You need to sit there and say, you, I'm not accountable to you, so I don't matter whether you believe I'm a Christian or not. I don't need you to sit there and try to tell me that I'm, I can make an assess myself. I'm not even going to make an assess myself. I'm going to sit there and say, I'm a child of God because of him. And I'm trying to do his will. And you sit there and come tell me with a small, thin layer, one thin slice of Christianity, and to hold me accountable because I'm not going to be accountable to you. I'm accountable to God. Stop letting people sit there and run people all the way from the church because you they didn't you didn't meet their criteria. You didn't need to meet their criteria. You need to meet God's criteria. You remember Christ said, I didn't come to call the righteous, but I came to call the sinners of repentance. So he's seeking you. He's seeking me. Those people sit there act like they never sin. Those people act like they don't sin. You need to sit there and say, get behind me, Satan. You're mindful of the things of man instead of the things of God. And don't sit there and tell me you want to give me one piece of God's will and hold me accountable for it. You don't hold the rest of the stuff in life that you're accountable for. Get a life. You pray for me. You have mercy for me. You don't sit there and condemn me because you have not the authority to do so. You should encourage me to do right because you don't sit there and try to tell me that I'm supposed to think the way you think. Doing that. Running so many people away from Christ. One, two people in church. You got some people said to say, how can you be a Democrat if you're a Christian? How can you be a Christian if you're a Republican? Get a life. You can be a Christian. You can call yourself a Christian. You can be affiliated with any party you want. The question is, as long as you say that, his will is above their will, their platform your platform, your will. I am not being held accountable because of you. I will take those issues, those platforms, those things to God. And on top of this, and we'll go over this, I am not an instrument of God. I'm not a judge. I don't judge people whether they go to heaven or hell. I don't judge that. I'm just telling you, you need to be accountable to God. And if you feel comfortable with what you're doing, you keep doing what you're doing with your bad self. But I know that I'm accountable to God. And you need to make sure you do that. When you confront people, they confront you. You say, pray for me. That's the thing I gotta work on. But I hope you're praying for yourself as well. And I hope you're lining up with his will as well. Because you know what? You come in the way you want to, but you can give account to God. And one of the things you got to worry about is if you sit there and condemn me, if you sit there coming against me, and especially you're trying to use physical force against me, you're going to be accountable to God. You do what you do. You call what you want to call it. Amen. Man, I, I mean, I'm going to go ahead and reflect on these scriptures again. <laughs> and I'm going to go ahead and put these videos out. And I, and I, and I hope that we all just study show ourselves approved. And just recognize we're accountable to God. What would Yeshua do when you make decisions? If you line up with that, I think you're going to make the right decision. I'm going to make perfect because no one's perfect. I ain't perfect. And I ain't said I am perfect. But I know what? I know nobody out there. I know. You know. None of them are perfect. None of them are holy. But they can be holy in Christ. You can't be holy outside of Christ. You can't be holy outside of your own preference. Your own righteousness. You're not going to be holy. You only be holy because of Him. You're going to be righteous because of Him. That's what the scripture says. All right? All right. God bless you. Hope you have a great week. And I'll see you when I see you. I'm going to go ahead and do my introduction.
uh, for these tapes. You know, I break them down into segments, right? I break them down to from A, B, and C, try to do 20 and 30 minutes, you know, mostly uh, <laughs> to the best of my ability. And, and then I to them and put those out, hopefully on a daily basis. I send them texts, I send them like, a, like today, <laughs> Monday, Wednesday, Friday. But the uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook and Twitter, they get it every day. You know, hey, gotta reach people the best way you can, right? It's about the word of God. Preach the gospel. That's what we call us to do. So I'm gonna preach it. I'm gonna teach it. I'm gonna discuss it. And I hope you do the same. Learn what you learn. Throw out what's not important, but don't throw out the will of God. And share, man. We need to, we, we, let's share the scriptures, all right? And don't forget to subscribe, all right? All right, God bless you. I'll see you. I'll see you. Like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and, and uh, do my introduction for my videotapes uh, from this session today. All right? Stay blessed. Bye bye. <laughs> this is the day that the Lord has made. We shall rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah, hallelujah. To God be the glory for all the good things He's done in our lives. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Love you.